bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Bring Them Out with your hosts, Joel Richardson and Alan Hill. <laughs> Hey, everybody. We are at the Sunnybrook Ballroom inside the Speakeasy for another episode of Bring Them Out. I'm Alan Hill, here with Soul Joel himself, Joel Richardson. Today we have a very special guest, a Soul Joel open mic success story, Mr. Jay Yoder. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for guys. joining us, yeah, I'm Jay. I'm excited. This is cool. And I never even thought about that until Alan brought it up. But, uh, but yeah, you, you, and you shared it uh, about a month ago, I think, was your comedy uh anniversary yeah right where it all started was was it january or it was it was i, th I think it might have been like two days before new year's like you okay. might, whatever that tuesday fell like i think it felt like two days before the end of the right before 2021 hit okay yeah so my wife recently my wife it was shared when like i actually told people my wife had let it out of the bag in like february and i was like don't tell people I'm. yeah she was this. tagging people yeah i'm like don't tell she's people worse I'm with me than social media she i'm like so trying to keep it on the wraps i'm like too late she was like i'm like please don't come say because i it was funny because in the comment in the bottom of the post i was like you know i'm in the driving range stage just like please don't come out see me you're not going to find me on StubHub or Ticketmaster. <laughs> And now you can. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Doing this for as long as I've been doing this, you're one of the opposite guys, though, where guys always want to come out, and as soon as they come to an open mic, they're trying it. That's why they're there. You're a guy, like, you... It's almost no, knowing that you're a teacher, because you, like, came at, uh, from a professor standpoint, yeah. where where you came and studied it first. Yeah. And o almost probably for a month or two, right? Yeah, I took notes. Yeah, I actually have a notebook. I have taken notes because my man okay. and I, we were just, we were just there to hang out, like because you know it was in the heat of the pandemic. Luckily, we had my <laughs> the mom. cold of the pandemic. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It was. It was the cold. Of, it was so cold. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I would take. And we that was our date night. That was our last date. Uh, you know, before the pandemic before the hit, shutdown. on the inside, yeah, we saw like Graham K. I I saw him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, we were always comedy junkies, but that was a great time. It was like, oh, you can get out of the house now. Like, oh, you can be safe. Oh, and my mom was already in the house and in our bubble, so it gave us an opportunity to get out for a couple hours on a Tuesday. And I, yeah, I wrote, and then I said to her over winter break, I was like, I think I, you know, I think I could do this. I've been watching some of these guys go up, and so I wrote during winter break to keep myself from doing schoolwork because I was doing way too much schoolwork. I was working around the clock as everybody was trying to help my school survive. Yeah, man. And yeah. I, just, I needed recess. I needed recess. Yes. Well, I, and I tell people that all the time. I'm like, oh, you want to try an open mic? Come to an open mic. It'll give you the confidence to try an open mic. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. great. It's the same in music, man. That's how I got on stage for the first yeah. time. Yep. Yeah, it is. It's. It, I mean, it's so. I remember how many times I thought I was going to throw up standing in the back in that back area they're right about ready to go up those stairs just like the nerves of it and i had you know i had like done school plays my claim to fame is i was the lion in the wizard of oz easy now. grade sacred art shout uh, out <laughs> sacred art's now buried it's like oh. I, I went by it i did a show in my hometown and it's like been demolished and it's now a wine and spirits so it's so sad but oh wow but i mean i always perform so like but still like there's no nothing it's like you're a singer songwriter you know what i mean like you're writing it and performing it it's not like those were lines i just had to memorize right yeah. so now this is like oh given i wrote and it. it's right. just you and it's me up there and i'll never forget it. i still remember the first time and and you had, you were great you got, I got off and you're like that was your first time or like you had you had a great presence and and i remember watching the tape back because my wife filmed it and it's just like Somebody said to me, like, yeah, we thought you might have been funny if we could have understood you because I was going so fast. That's, oh. yeah. The I wrote probably problem. 10 minutes of material and squished it into four. Wow. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? I it was that. just like, and then it was like, oh, let me tell you this joke. Oh, you don't like it? Let me go get a new toy. Oh, let me go get a new toy. <laughs> yeah. And it was that mentality. Like, yeah. I didn't wait for laughter yeah. to happen. I right. just kept. That's the biggest gun. problem is that people don't realize it's not that the crowd didn't think you were funny. They're still trying to catch up to the first thing you said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right on. Yeah. And, and then and even then, then you, you tell too many, you put too many rungs on the ladder at first, like a like a freshman essay. Like they got to restate the thesis a thousand times to make the page count because they think it's all about the page count, the word count. Right. And right. you put too many rungs on the ladder and we're like, the audience doesn't need that much detail that you say something, you choose the right words up front and they get it and they're riding with you. And then but it takes so long. Right. To like 
trim the fat was the was the a lot of the the lingo you hear from people to be like, oh, you got to streamline it, you got to trim the fat. And but the thing is that you're 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 a teacher, so you're you might not have been in front of a comedy audience, but you're in front of a captivated audience every day. I think that I think that's the one thing that's helped me kind of jump. Yeah, a, a little bit is because yeah, I'm doing five shows a day for 45 minutes. Right, you know, yeah. from a less than captive audience. <laughs> I know. I was like, I, I'd be fun here if the curriculum didn't get in the way. You know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wait now, <laughs> did you kill it already? Yeah. Kill it already. Uh, That's just true. Do, do you uh, do you, do you teach Spanish? I do. I teach Spanish and so, Latin. So have Ooh. you made people laugh in another language? So it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've always like physic like with physical comedy more. But I was in Spain. We went. My dad lives there, so we took the girls over and spent a month there. And I actually wrote. Five minutes, I had converted one of my, like, my Planet Fitness and gym bit into a Spanish bit. And then I, like, practiced it for some of my dad's friends uh, to kind of make sure, like, it was good. Because I was like, I want I want to try once. I want to try a, a bilingual mic. Like, I would love to have five minutes in, a, in yeah. another line. Like, that would be, like, so cool. But I've not I've not actually done it yet. I've never pulled the trigger. Oh. Oh, I no, but, no, but I, I meant even in class. Have you tried to? Oh, like while I'm speaking the other yeah. language, they're holding. I mean, you're talking about like donde está la biblioteca? Like, yeah, like there. It's like it's it physically physical humor. Yeah, I can incorporate that or like, but yeah, like not with like a turn of phrase or like something. But <laughs> I always make them laugh. But I, you know, because you're trying to like keep them engaged and keep them with you. So you yeah. got like that's the only way. Like my new phrase with I told my seventh graders the other day, I was like, you guys got to cheat better. Like you need to cheat better. <laughs> And they, they start dying. I'm like, you do? Like, I'm like, they, they just don't think about it. Like, I, I was joking. I was like, I copied my friend's homework, but I didn't copy his name, too. Like, they took a photo. A kid took a oh photo of his work God. and didn't crop out his buddy's name at the top because it was his buddy's paper. <laughs> so it was just like, like, we used to peel, like, I don't know if you did this, but we used to unpeel, like, water bottles and, like, write on the inside label of a water bottle. That's So you would, like, right do it, like, there. in here, and then you'd wrap it back around. And then like, we would put some effort, just a little integrity with you're cheating did oh they watch gosh. spies like us i mean that's a you know but like that's all I'll joke with them with properly. stuff like that because i'll call them out like because whenever there's a situation a kid's cheating doing whatever i try to diffuse it with comedy or i try to diffuse like you know if there's tension or something like that so that's probably the way that i use it the most because it's just like and then it's engaging and then or if i want to know if they're paying attention it's like the office where it's that dry humor i'll just throw a phrase out there randomly that doesn't make sense with what I had been saying right, just right. to see if they look up and they're just like <laughs> what did he just say yeah. <laughs> well I just even That's meant great. like uh so uh shout out to Joey St. John him and I went to Cancun and like he speaks Portuguese and I, I spoke wow. Spanish is he yeah. really yeah 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 and oh he's learned because his uh his mom his mom's side they're all from Portugal no kidding. Wow. and uh which is I it's similar it's romantic language but I yeah. Spoke, sp I don't speak Look Spanish. You know, well, I didn't know it's that a romance told. language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, not to brag. Tom Segura. Back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but but I would, uh, you know, <laughs> like little stupid stuff, like like say like gordito, or babito, like I'm uh, caught, you know, I'm a little hungry, stuff like that. Like to make those guys laugh on the resort, I'm like, I still got it. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I got into producing, but yeah. every once in a while, I can make them laugh, but make them laugh in their native language. That's I go, right. yeah, yeah. That's yep. good stuff. When well, they love that, stuff. like that, anytime you're attempt, that's that's what I realized the first time I ever. I mean, I'm from Carbondale, Scranton, coal mine regions. Like nobody's, we barely are proficient in English, so it's like <laughs> to think that somebody would speak enough. That was what would appeal. I wanted to get out of there. So mm -hmm. we went on a cruise when I was like 15, and I had maybe one year of Spanish in my belt. 60 girls from Panama were on a quinceanera, so one of them must have been wealthy and said, hey, I'm going to bring 59 of my closest <laughs> girlfriends, wow. and we're going to go on this like Royal Caribbean or Carnival cruise. And uh, and I just remember like trying to speak to them because I saw the guys that looked like Jersey Shore and I and I saw them just trying to like muscle them way up. But I would try to start speaking to them and it was so endearing that yeah, they yeah. loved it. That's cool. You know, that is oh, very cool. cool. So I probably was funny, but I wasn't trying to be. Right, 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 you know right, 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 right. It's <laughs> unintentional. Yeah, don't, yeah. So there's joy getting a laugh. Yeah, you know, and then and, and they're like, you know, look at this guy trying so hard. It's so adorable, and it worked. Well, I, I got at least one girl on that cruise. Well done. <laughs> well, well done. And off off camera, you uh, I didn't realize him. Uh, you and I have a uh, another similarity. Uh, radio DJs in college. 
Oh my god, no one yeah. listened. I swear, no one listened. I think, I think, like I had like my mom called in once just because she felt bad. <laughs> Were you on a frequency? It was the internet radio, I think, or Sinus was time? running it on the net. Yeah, so I think it, you had to like it was being streamed. Oh, so that's online. what brought you this area, or Sinus? Yeah, so or Sinus. That's that's when I I went to college. That's how I got down here from okay. Scranton. Right and my dad's side of the family is from Pottstown and Stowe, so I think that's why I landed here because I wanted to be near my grandma. Unfortunately, she had passed right before I started at Sinus. Okay, okay, okay. But I wanted to be down in this area because it kind of felt like home we would come down i always knew i was close to home because i saw the towers of limerick and then the big orange you know the, the big nuclear orange power balls plant in case you don't understand yeah. what the towers mean yeah. yeah it was like being in an episode of the simpsons i was like my grandparents live in springfield this is amazing <laughs> so like but that's how i knew i was always close to grandma you know you don't have a sense of anything when you're young but as soon as i saw the towers i saw the big orange balls for the airport yeah. i was like okay i was close but so i would always come down here so i felt comfortable and i'm glad and now i've never left and now it's like here i am and it's crazy that it's like that was 2001 so it's like yeah 22 years ago you're right? hustling man i'm hustling i am hustling yeah i've always been i was always a hustler my mom always had me in a million activities as a kid because you know, she she was working double shifts. She put herself through nursing school later in life, so she was busy. So she wanted Hustler. me to be busy. Yeah. So like, yeah, I did it all: gymnastics, basketball, You're a big baseball, baseball player, right? Yeah, big baseball Coach guy. Coached uh, for seventeen years over at a local high school. Uh, yeah, I love baseball to this day. I was I for a while. Too. Yeah, yeah. So that was huge. So yeah, I, I mean, I was always busy. So now gymnastics, it's like, gymnastics. Buddy, I did ballet. Over that, I did ballet. There was tap, ballet. Did you dance. Did yeah, I did it all: acting, singing. Yeah. So you were like, why not comedy? Why not comedy? It was but, almost like a natural. I mean, I always, yeah, like, yeah, why not comedy? We well, were doing that all by, those are all individual things, too. even though they're team, but sure. they're mostly individual. Yeah. Yeah, they're all in karate, you know, things. I was big in the karate. I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle so bad. Oh, between <laughs> ballet and karate. Which is I why you're you still just... wearing green all these years <laughs> later. Oh, that's right. That's right. I really, I really wanted to be uh, Leonardo. I love it. Came in with a pizza in tow. That's right. No, I yeah, I was yeah, I've I've always been like that. But and even with school, like when I became a teacher, that was my life, and I was spending so many hours. I was during the pandemic when we were going coming to your place. I was actually working at night for Villanova as a IT guy. So I I'd be in the pit on my laptop sometimes answering help desk. Tickets. What? Because they needed like they, they it wasn't very often, but I, I thought you were stealing call. jokes. No, yeah, right. No, I'm, I'm joking, <laughs> joking, 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 joking. I wish I. Uh, but I added like I yeah I was sitting there you know and and it was good money they were paying me to just be on call in case some kid got locked out of his you know password or whatever and it was super simple uh, and it was so helpful for them. So I was doing 15 hour work days there and I was just it was good money but I was burning myself out and. I didn't, yeah, so this was the first time since this has happened, this two years, I've been, I'm home more, which is weird to say, but like coaching baseball, basketball, and football, I was never home before dinner, like for dinner time. I didn't get home. Now I get my daughters off the bus, I'm there to do homework after school, and then at about 7 o'clock, 6.30, whatever, then I shoot out somewhere every night, pretty much, that's pretty much my I wondered how you were balancing. So so yeah. so you have that middle shift, right? So I have that. I get I get home. Yeah. So I get done with work. Really, about school gets out at two fifteen. So you know I'm home around two forty. My daughters get off the bus about four o'clock. So I have about an hour and a half to myself every day. Right. Nap there. time or nap time. Nice. Recently <laughs> nap time. Nice. Recently nap time. Because that's the one thing I always realize too is that like people ask me like when do I sleep? I'm like because I post, pass out, wake up, I post again. Like you're seeing. <laughs> The I've, seen, yeah, I've seen Joel post at 11.57 p.m. I've seen Joel post at 2.37 a.m. I've yeah. seen him at 5 o'clock a.m. Yeah, just, it's like a, <laughs> yeah. that, that's how I was during the pandemic, but I was helping all these like students and parents and teachers, and I it felt a little like unrequited love for a while, and and I wasn't get, it wasn't filling me up. Mm -hmm. I was I was you know I I was lighting myself on fire to keep everybody else warm. Yeah, yeah. And now this this was time for me to do what I wanted. Uh, and it was it was it was bringing joy to other people. I wanted to make my wife laugh. Like we had impractical jokers on the TV nonstop during because we just we needed to laugh. You needed to constantly break tension. Love it. You know it's hard. My mom lives in the house with us. I have oh, two okay. small kids. We were both teachers. I mean that whole time was. Your like, mom was there during the pandemic. Yep. Too? Yeah. Yeah. She's lived with us since my oldest was born. So almost a decade now. No so, kidding. Okay. So and that's you know obviously. 
obviously juggling your mom living with you. You wanna you wanna see what kind of faults you really have. And like you're like, oh my god, I I'm just like her. I see all the stuff. God bless my wife. You but, also have a built-in babysitter. But that's the thing. There's so many more pros than cons. <laughs> 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 there are, there are. I mean, it's tough because there's sometimes there's too many cooks in the kitchen with yeah. parenting and making sure, decisions, sure. and she should be able to be grandma and spoil them, but she also lives with them, so. There's a lot of give and take, I think, you know, at that point. But yeah. but yes, yeah, and then it helps. So then at night, uh, you know, when they're resting down. So my wife has to do some always is in charge of bedtime. But then I'm I handle the morning. I make the lunches when I get in whatever time it is. And then if it's the weekends, uh, she gets to sleep in. And then I we go out somewhere. We go do something. That's so and so cool. that's how I, I just just be intentional. I'm just very intentional about my time, you know, every day. That's awesome. It's really man. cool, man. Yeah. Your approach is amazing. I love that you're so studious about comedy, too. Yeah, I really, I mean, it's just fun. And it really is now. Now it's like, it's you can really, s- inside baseball, and all the things I thought about with baseball and learning how to take a proper lead and all of that. Now yeah. I've just taken all of that like mindset and shifted it to comedy and just said, oh, okay. Ooh, I threw my front shoulder open too early on that one. I couldn't hit the outside pitch. Right. But now it's about a setup, a punchline, and a tag. I love you that, know? man. That's so cool. And that's, so I'm just using that mentality. 17 years of of coaching at a pretty high level with uh, the baseball around here is pretty awesome. So you, you had that mentality anyways. I was doing morning workouts, afternoon workouts. So I'm just taking all of that and, and applying it, you know? That's the, awesome, man. The one crazy thing... Uh, that like so so you kind of did what I did like how I started Soul Drill Productions was I wanted to do it create stage time so that's what you did at uh, tuned up yep. creating your own stage time uh, but then I re- I realized that I wanted to keep doing that that's what I loved I love producing shows you did it to really create stage time and now you're on a national tour yeah it's he crazy. just he just finished the the Keswick Theater <laughs> it doesn't even feel like it's real dude. I saw that on Facebook dream. and I was like. Yeah, Jack. I can't. I can't. <laughs> so the, the the how that came to fruition was uh, so quick. It was so. We fast. just what two years ago you started. Just yeah, my first open mic was like two years ago. Yeah. So it was like Amazing. very fast, but but out? I went in with uh, yeah, I didn't go in as a 22 year old barista looking to kill time. I went in <laughs> saying, well, if I'm away from my family, then it's for a purpose. Yeah, and for we're, an we're end. going here. At first, I was like, I thought maybe it was just Sunday softball, you know, church softball. At first, that that was my mentality. It was just me to. It was a fun thing that I did. I challenged myself to do. I got up in front of people and said, "Is this funny?" And that was cool. And then it just became this thing that I just, it was a, t- it's like, t- I don't know, I don't have tattoos, but people say, you know, once you get that first tattoo, once you get that first laugh, lights out. It's all over. You know what I mean? Like, I got off the stage at the Kodak Center. That's where we played our first gig last Wednesday, week today. Probably would have been, yeah, would have been just getting off stage. Uh, and I just looked up and it was like 1,400 people. <laughs> Are in this place fourteen? Uh, you probably could have added up every bar show I've ever done <laughs> and not put fourteen on. Uh, and it was just it was mind blowing. And when and when here, you like, yeah, when you tell that first line and it gets that first laugh and and that many people are laughing like there's. So I got off stage and I immediately you know texted my wife to call my mom and I was like you know I just like I I gotta find a way to keep doing this like this is it's a different feel than a club because I really like interacting Probably, yeah. with people yeah They're, you're not trying to interact at that point you're trying to like deliver you have no your one material. can see that person yeah. you can't be like that guy in the Eagles jersey exactly. you're like I don't right you can't, I can't yeah. there's no cra- I know there or there was so by the third show last Sunday at the Keswick. I got to a level where there was a woman up front. I'd heard someone mention admin, so I was like, oh, that's that's an easy one. Admin at a teacher show, I could have fun with her. And so I saw a woman, and towards the end of my cell, set, set, I actually did a little riff that worked. I was like, oh, I didn't recognize you without your clipboard, ma'am. Thank you. I was nice. like, let me start over. I didn't I didn't start with my learning objectives. And teachers, like, you know, when it's a teacher show like that, it's a lot of inside baseball. So I, there was stuff there that I would have told at Mike's and would have, just silence because it didn't it wasn't relatable right so luckily i've met a few other teacher comedians and i did a show with this guy gaspar randazzo who is a big tiktok guy my wife had seen him he's a long island or staten island staten island teacher huge on tiktok makes all these funny little videos he was at punchline i just messaged him i said listen i'm a local guy i would love the opportunity to MC or you know even just come to the show and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll shave 10 minutes off and give you 10 minutes. 
All because I messaged him. Wow. And now we're like really tight. We're very close. We talk almost every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's given me so much advice. He's like, hey, here's my number. Call me. And uh, and and he was just like, yeah, there's so much room at the table. You I was like, I wasn't really writing teacher stuff at first. I was trying to separate myself from education at that point. And now I'll, I opened f- in front of him was a guy named Tell Williams, who is a two million TikTok followers. I mean, this guy is like huge LGBTQ advocate and so many other things. And he draws so many people there. Is that to do with the pants? Yes. Yeah, so he's with amazing. The pants? pants, nails, hair. You see the picture, he's on what I'm point. About. He's yeah, got yeah, yeah. it all. No, no, he's got a look. You'll see. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you. And, My eyes uh, were up here. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. He is amazing, too. So he had already been on board teachers and is doing podcasts for them and reels. And uh, I messaged him and I was like, hey, you saw me. Do you think that he's like, oh, yeah, you'd be great. I said, well, could you put in a good word? I sent a press kit over to the board teacher email. And they got back to me, gave me an audition to go down and do a show in North Carolina. And then that actually got canceled because there was like a hurricane or whatever. And and then so last week was sort of my audition with them. Um, and it, it went really well. They At first they did the sandwich them in the middle, 10 minutes. And then I went to, then the next show I went to the up front to get the go- going. And then they, mm-hmm. gave, they added set time. They gave me an extra five minutes in the third show. So. I was like, oh, that's great. Wow, man. Preparation so, meets opportunity. And now I have thing. Santander April 5th I and S- State Theater and Easton April 6th. And then, uh, you know, we have uh, dates going through December. So I'm waiting to find out which shows I'm at. They do like West Coast. We're going out to like California. And But you uh, said you have a gig so booked awesome. every weekend for the rest of the year. So, so I have like other shows in general booked, but like... They have shows every weekend for the rest of the year. Oh, oh. So, but they have ten comedians on their um, roster. On their roster, and they do four or five person rosters. So, okay. my hope is I'll continue to get weekends with them. And uh, based on how last week went, I think that's a, a, a very likely. But Beautiful. you know, even if it's not like that's that, it, you know, it's uh, all it was ride a fun run. It's fun. It's great. Um, and uh, I have a lot of playing City Winery up in New York City with the with Gasper next month. We got two sold out shows at Governors in Long Island in April. So we got some other because he's doing his own stuff too. Yeah, he's headline basically he's headlining uh, a, a lot of these clubs because he worked with another guy named Mr. D who is a touring teacher comedian and he's playing like he'll be at Helium in May. I just saw him at the Stress Factory. He did four shows. He had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday Jeez. sold out. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So they had added Thursday. Program. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I never even heard about this until I saw. Yeah, 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 thing yeah. Facebook. Same thing. Yeah. There's so much. There's there's such a market. Well, because it's it's an opportunity. Like so, teachers have been undervalued for a while, and and they can't sometimes vent or you know because then it would look bad because they're so it, like it almost is a channel for these teachers to have somewhere to commiserate or to hear about yeah. you know their story being told, even though they you know they feel like they can't tell it because. It would go against, you know, it wouldn't look good if they were out posting about what really was happening. Right. So this gives an avenue for those teachers to feel heard and laugh and break tension and and do all the things we want to do with comedy. So I think it's such a cool thing. I just can't believe I I I, I would have never thought. So now it's just now it's like now I'm like extra paying attention to stuff at school and like like kids kids will just give you gold they will just say stuff like (laughs) and they don't know you're listening but and usually i would tune it out because i don't want to be listening but like the other day i had a girl say she was like i can't wait for gym class so i can throw dodgeballs at his face and i was like i don't know who he is or what he did but like those are just random tidbits i'm like oh my god that's funny so now i can take that and like create a story of what i imagined had happened and create this other kid and what did he do and uh, I'm doing a lot with slang now because the slang they say is out of hand. That's oh, one of my favorite jokes that. now. I get this teaching private lessons. Go ahead. So I just love like bet, bro. Bet. Well, what's you a, know, no cap, 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 no cap. <laughs> cap yeah. All of this stuff. I mean, you've heard these. Yeah, things, yeah. Well, right? and I see a bunch of your videos that you're doing. Yeah, and they're like, like so. It's just like so. I'll float out stuff that way, and I'll make a reel about it. And then sometimes it'll turn into a stand-up bit, and sometimes it won't. But the reels were a way for me to get that content out there without giving away like my stand-up because I see so many people doing clips. And I'm like, oh, I got to get stuff out there uh, about who I am and my personality, but I don't want to, I don't want to give away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people have success with like crowd work and stuff like that. So, you know, as I get more clips where I work crowd work on, you know, I put some of those out as well too. But yeah, I'm, that's I'm, that's my year two goal for myself was social media. 
year one, and you knew this, was 100 open mics. If you're going to yeah. do it once, do it 100 times. And uh, and I I actually got my first and my hundredth in the dome, uh, and then uh, and then uh, and then after that I uh, now with social media so I joined TikTok I joined Instagram I already had Facebook, and now that now I'm trying to push that up. So with um, Casper you said right? Gasper. Gasper. Yeah, so he he's actually like mentoring you in, in a way. Yeah, he's been so great. There's a lot of there's a lot of headliners that tell you to like not do certain jokes because you got to leave it for them. But he's actually encouraging you. Like, it doesn't matter yes. if it's like, oh, and we, don't yes. talk about school. Don't talk about being a teacher. You're like, but that's yep. who I am. Never. Yeah, well, that's what he says now because now he's been, you know, we've talked and he's like, yeah, my, his, because his wife and his sister come to a lot of the shows and uh, they're like, oh, he's such a great compliment because, like, I am, like, storytelling, talking about my daughters. He's talking about these rough kids that he deals with in Staten Island. So it's, and he's got this, like, really just cool tone to him. And so we compliment each other well. I thought, I think he saw that, which was great because I, you're right. I was so, like, gunshot. Yeah. Yeah. And you're worried. Like, you're like, oh, this is, a, this is not a team sport. Comedy's not a team sport, but it, it's felt like that with the camaraderie. Right. Um, which is great. So, you know, obviously, and, and I'm just happy to be along for whatever ride comes, comes my way. Just opportunities to keep doing what I love. Yeah. I heard you talking on one of your podcasts about um, the car rides. Mm. I think you were talking, uh, Mark Riccadonna, maybe? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, he and I have had a few car rides. But which is so cool fun. to me, just the, 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 what goes on in those car rides. Must Dude, I, so so the first, one of the first things I did, because, you know, it's, yeah, it's a hustle. So, like, one of the things, my wife still won't talk to me. If I mention Connecticut, she will get very upset with me. <laughs> Jealous of Mark? Or? No, not Mark. Oh. But the way I met Mark was through a guy named Frank Vignola. Yeah, yeah. And so basically I was on this Facebook group. I saw this guy had performed in my hometown. So I reached out. I'm like, oh, I'm from that area. If you're ever performing around there, I'd love to do it again. And he ended up adding me to this group where he pushed out work when he had it. And he had put something out, was like, hey, I need someone to I need someone to give me a ride here. I can pay, you know, gas and tolls or whatever. And so I just I immediately answered it. He called me, said sure, and I basically drove from here to Queens to pick him up, then two hours north to take him to Connecticut, and not even the like, he couldn't guarantee me stage time. He guaranteed me paying me for the time, but it was like Max Dolcelli and Peaches Rodriguez were on the show with him, who are like, and you know, and I'm sure you've met you've yeah, had yeah, Peaches yeah, on yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So these were guys, these people have been working in the industry a long time. So I was like, oh, well, just the opportunity to be in their presence, cool. I like a road trip, but it was snowing, and I had my Prius. And my wife had no idea the gig was in Connecticut. <laughs> so it was like four hours up there. I ended up getting 10 minutes of stage time. Nice. But thank God you had a Prius, so it looked like you just drove to Wawa. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I didn't have to spend any extra gas. <laughs> but the snow, we had to, like, brush the snow off my car by the time we were leaving. Wow. Then I had to drive him back to Queens and then back. So it was like, you know, eight hours round trip in the car for almost 10 minutes of stage time wow. and like 150 but you bucks. did get on but i you got on get on yes i got goodness. on but like so now like so but on the car ride with him i got to talk to frank i got to pick his brain i got to you know and then he introduced me to mark riccadonna and i've been i've emceed a couple shows for them very nice and uh and so those car rides are huge because you get to pick their brain you get to see the inside baseball and get like neo in the matrix i'm trying to get in that chair yes. and i want to know jujitsu you know yes right I know kung fu. Yeah, <laughs> keep getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the same with musicians, man. Because we would have we well, travel as bands, and that's what, and that's well, that's the first thing that happened with Joel when I met Joel. Because like, you know we were down there, and I I sent him a message. I remember I sent him a message. I was like, "Hey, uh, I don't know if this is a thing, but I would love to like help work the door or be." seating and if it's not then this is somebody hacked my account <laughs> it's oh <something>. hilarious <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And i was like i didn't because like you know i was like he's running this club down here i've been like yeah and i didn't want to like intrude but that's what i realized like you don't know unless you ask and, yeah and then next thing you know that worked out beautifully i was able to do well was right down the street i could be there in a split like you had somebody that couldn't make it i could be down there in five minutes yeah, and yeah. got to meet like dice i got Got to Dice and Bill, Dice Bellamy. Play, Bill Bellamy. Dude. Like, I mean, Aunt Louis C.K., Joe, Louis C.K., I, I couldn't, Louis C.K., not, like, he acknowledged I was by the porta potties and he walked down the hill, and he, like, waved at me, and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> I couldn't move. <laughs> like, that's the guy that, like, my wife and I, we put that on Pandora. We've gone and seen him, you know, pre and post his incident, and uh, we're just diehard fans, so, like, 
yeah, it was just it was such a cool opportunity to uh, to just be in it. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, he yeah, was Joe so List. Da- I got to talk to Joe List. I went to the Vermont Comedy Festival. He headlined it. He came to the after party, and I went up. I'm like, hey, I don't know if you remember, I saw you, Joel's in the middle of that thunderstorm, and I was the guy in the back holding because I was like pouring rain, holding like. Like the, the metal curtain back that had fallen <laughs> and Louis almost fell over because oh. it snapped on him. Yeah, oh, man. yeah, it hit his funny. hand. Oh, yeah. I thought oh, I was geez. done. Oh, oh yeah. Was, oh man. It was, it yeah. we, we, I go, we sorry, were man. And he goes, <laughs> we were out. Like, well, it was amazing what what was happening. It was amazing that comedy was even happening. So yeah. I think there was like so much. Yeah. Well, Joe was, held the mic like this, and he goes, "Oh, if I hold the mic like Bob Barker, do do you think the lightning won't hit me?" <laughs> And you're like, yeah, no shot, dude. <laughs> yeah, Good, but he's funny. So yeah, I was mentioning him, and he was talking about how much he had loved performing because he came a bunch. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Day one or well, yeah. day one of the. Yeah, I was always Joe listening friends, and you're like, is Louis coming? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd yeah. get on the mailing list so you'd find out. Oh yeah, yeah. man. Yep. Joe listening friends. That was code. Yeah. Special yeah. secret code for you. Better get exactly. your ass to that show. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously, I mean. I'll never forget that. So yeah, that was that was just cool, you know. But a lot of that starts with asking and reaching out. And I th- I think, you know, if if everybody sees who you are and and what your intentions are, and I think that that that's it's been great for me. It's worked out really well for me to just you know be a part of the community. And you get to see how small the community is. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. And do you find yourself uh, people reaching out to you now that you're running tuned up that way? So I'll have people that like want to get on the show or do whatever, and it's great because like I had it booked out through May. But what I realized is like June and July, like it's just harder in June and July to do shows. One, it's hot, and two, everybody's at the beach and stuff like that. So now I'm like starting to think about the fall shows. Like you're trying to, yeah, I'm trying, and I'm trying to make diverse lineups. I'm trying to make lineups that are like I always wanted tuned up to be an opportunity for people to get time who were maybe at the crux but really weren't getting like 30 minute or 20 minute set opportunities but i'd seen done four or five tight five minutes so i'm like they have it they're just haven't yeah. been able to do it all at once and so it started with that and now we're starting to you know hopefully branch out and be able I mean, it's hard on a saturday and i tried to keep it as a free show but we might start doing a cover we did a cover last month just to try to because you want to pay i want if people are coming all the way out here on a saturday that's gas. That's time. It's time away from their family. Oh, I thought you started out as as pay, uh, paid. No, it's free, and so it was free. And then uh, Clint would just give me uh, like a little budget based oh. on what he would give a band to be there for three hours. Oh, I got okay. you. I got you. So then this past month was the first time because I was like, oh, I want to get you know, I want to get some. I'd love to have somebody come down that uh, you know has a bigger cred or has something, but. If you can't offer them a certain amount on a Saturday night, then right, right, never, right, right. So, but, but yeah. So, and, you know, and it's just been a great for Clint because Clint, who owns uh, Tuned Up, has just been so gracious because we went there. My wife and I went there right before the pandemic, and it was great because it was right by your club. It was right yeah. there, uh, and uh, and then you didn't know if they were going to bounce back. And uh, and the comedy night, he actually tonight was the first night that now it's just comedy night. So he gives us the whole night because we've been getting good amount of people coming out he's getting Beautiful. some business wednesday was his slowest day oh before so, that it was also music so it was it, also a blues jam and so that had grown so he pushed that to thursday nights and then now gave us wednesdays as just comedy night okay okay That's which is great because cool. now you got tuesday here you got wednesday there there's one in Exton on Thursdays, mm. so now you have this middle of the week when normally you wouldn't have shows. Right. And now there's something. You can get up. And then Monday's yeah. the only outlier, uh, but you got Punchline, you got some other things, or Phantom Power. Right. Uh, right, yeah, that's no Monday's. Yep. Phoenixville. But there's no more of that gap, and Phoenixville is all done, so there's no more. There's nothing real close, which is a little bit of a bummer because it was nicer for me to not, to not have to be so far away from home. Like last night, or Monday night, I... Was it last night? I don't even know what day it is. But Monday night, two nights ago, yeah, I had to drive, you know, an hour and a half to hour and ten minutes out to Lancaster. But it's cool. Because you had to go get that fix, man. Uh, dude. And you, <laughs> you had to get I was on, on the stage, Keswick. Man. I was literally, it hadn't even been 24 hours from on the Keswick, and I had to get back on it. Because then I was like, oh, there's some new things that That's I wanted a sign. to get in. And I wanted to do so. Fourteen hundred grab- people one night, right. seven jaded comedians the next. Right. Yes. <laughs> that, last night, yep. same, identical. Right. Do a grape room uh, last night after I left here. I went to grape room and uh, crickets. It was like the first time. Like I sat there for four minutes and didn't get anything. I told like, wow. and they were good jokes and they weren't giving me anything. Now, what and do you think like, happened? I think it was what a combination. Happened? One, I think I started out. 
not my normal likable sense. I think I went in a little like uh, tired, low energy. Yeah, I, think yeah, I was yeah. a little tired, and I didn't I didn't grab the mic and come out like a cannon. Sometimes I like to come out like I'm shot out of a cannon, yeah. especially when I'm in a younger crowd and I'm the older guy. Right on. And I don't think I came out in that same boisterous but it was great I actually was perfect because when I got off I was like oh my god that was like the sounds of silence and it like felt good because it was like uh, teaching Latin yeah Julius Caesar when he would come back from like a big conquest mm -hmm. they said that he uh would they have these big parades I mean think Eagles parade times a million you right know on, what I mean right like on. think Caligula meets <laughs> the Eagles <laughs> parade <laughs> <laughs> so like he would like get on this chariot and apparently he had the story goes that he had a slave whose sole job was to whisper in his ear, you are just immortal. That's priceless. And that's, like, cool. Like, that's, like, you need something like that to be ground. Like, it was perfect. Yeah. It was, like, that's exactly... Because the reality is you got to dare to suck. And if you're not if you're not daring to suck, then you're... And you're only going to go up there and do the hits, then, you know, then that's... I mean, and maybe that's enough for some people, but I want to grow. I want to get better. I want to, you know... Yeah, yeah, no. You know. You're, you're not the type that's just going to rest on your laurels. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, like, I... And I... There's a really good TED Talk. Uh, it's called Five Ways to Kill Your Dreams, which obviously is... Oh. A <laughs> uh, joke, but it's this woman from, uh, I think she's from Portugal, and she does this whole thing about five ways, and the one is to, like, s you know, settle, you know, settle and instead of try to find the next peak, try the next, find the next there mountain, like, find the next challenge, you know, or believe that everybody else has the answer for you, or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like, or believe in overnight successes, believe, if you want to kill your dreams, believe in overnight successes, it's like, do you ever see that poster? And maybe it's because I'm a teacher. It's an iceberg, <laughs> but the tip is the only, you don't see underneath the water. Mm -hmm. All of what took to get that iceberg to the top was this mass of effort and time that nobody saw. All you see is the little bit that's above the surface and you don't see how much goes in underneath. And that's, that's the thing too. That's, that tells me like, even at two years, like, I'm still underneath water. I've, I've peaked out a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's like there's still a lot of work uh, well, and a lot of formation. People all the time see see me at a show, and they just think they're like, oh, Joel's job's so fun. I'm like, that because that's all they see. They don't realize, <laughs> how do you think these comics got here? How do you think the audience got here? I'm not like... And How then all of a sudden I, I blink and everyone's here. I mean, Dude. running an open mic in a bar takes like <laughs> something. So you imagine running an actual outfit and yeah. club where there's people getting paid and there's contracts. And yeah. I was seeing behind the scenes on some of that stuff was like crazy. Like I'd never heard of the concept. I, you always hear like, oh, put all blue up M&Ms in my right, like, right. waiting. But yeah. it was crazy to see what are they called riders or whatever yeah. like that. And it's just like amazing to see the behind the scenes that has to happen. Bonkers. Is this supposed to be a green room in theory? Uh, so, so it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a speakeasy. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, bridal suite. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, okay. so oh, sweet. <laughs> <It is> sweet. <laughs> but yeah, so it'll, uh, and, and back when it was a restaurant in 2019, it was also like, uh, somewhere where they can have like uh, private tastings or like, uh, cool. a, a special dinner or something like that. Or if you wanted to like flex. You just you and your girl. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, private room. But yeah, but the the the, the room is actually uh, the door is an elevator. So uh, so you, if you have it closed, people oh, it would just know. Looks like yeah, oh. that no one's in here, and it was it was a real speakeasy, and then the the entrance was to the left. You know that uh, the school that I taught at had their prom here once, and uh, it was when this place was open as a bar. Yeah. And they shared the bathroom. With the prom, so you'd have these guys drinking, oh. going into the same. So I had to, sh as a chaperone, I had to like just stay in the bathroom. The like, how uncomfortable to just be standing in a restroom watching people go urinate. For, oh like, man, it was because like they were so worried about either like, so like, drunk like, dudes cost high school. Oh, girls. here, let me give you a drink in the bar, or <laughs> right. like whatever, or, oh, like, whatever shenanigans could happen. And uh, I was like, because they loved always having it here, but when it was whatever it was, it was before Gatsby's. Um, but it was, yeah, as the last time I remember being here is chaperoning dances in the main hall. Oh, it's, it's such a beautiful, uh, my, my, my wife's grandparents, like used to come here and dance like, wow. and they're like almost 90, like, you know, so this place is so historic. It's, yeah, yeah. it's gotta be so great. Every, everyone's got their own story. That that's one that I hadn't even realized that's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah. there's like five or six proms this year. Right. Kidding right. Me? Yeah. So many, and they're 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 always fighting for venues and dates, and uh, and so now it's another opportunity, and it's a beautiful place, and you're right here. So you got Potts Grove, Potts Town, Owen J. You know, there's so many. Yeah. 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 
Wow, that's cool. And You're Blue, I, I saw Blue. My my daughter went nuts because she's a huge Bluey fan. I feel. Was she here? No, we couldn't make it. I think we were. I think we were away that weekend, but she would have wanted to. Bluey's ruined it for every dad. Like Bluey, I don't know if you ever watched an episode of Bluey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy's like on point. Like I, so you can no father could ever live up to to Bluey. So it's like. I don't even like watching the show because I'm just like, I'm a failure. He's amazing. The guy, he's not even a real person, but like everybody feels like there's memes going all around about how awesome of a dad Bluey's dad is. Oh, and that's I'm like, priceless. It's so funny. But they, I love the characters. I think all of the things you're doing are just so much fun. It's Thanks, just, man. Yeah, well, just trying to give people a different reason to come down the driveway. And it starts with uh, not just comedy, man. That's my first love. But you got to do every event to grab everybody's Entertainment. Attention. Entertainment yeah. comes in a variety of forms, right? And you'll... I mean, look at that line dancing. I mean, that that's no joke. That it's so hard to find a parking spot sometimes, and yep. uh, like, that's been that's yeah. no joke. I never would have thought about it. I never, and that's huge. I've know? worked yeah. with Joel on five event days. You know, yeah, where there's uh, you know legs and eggs brunch in the morning. There's a magician. Yeah. There's yeah. there's a kickboxing class. Two comedy shows. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. We well, got all this space. You got to. Yeah, there's a ton of opportunity. But even the now to see the open mic like last night, and that's cool for Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Huffshire was hosting last night. Shout out to Jeremy. Jeremy. Um, yeah, because he's great. He's he's a, a you know a guy that just you know comes out to all the mics. He's like, you know, you just you just uh, just one of the characters, one of the cast of characters that makes it like a family. Like everybody's got like I don't know. It's just it's always like. Friendsgiving, it feels like at some of the open mics, you know, people you wouldn't have imagined you'd be like hanging out with. And he you was, know. you put him on a show. I don't know what it was. I did. I put him and on a show. In I was working the open mic for Joel the week before that happened. And they, uh, there was a woman here. I don't remember her name that was part of that show also that announced it on stage that Jeremy was going to be going on. And uh, we were like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeremy. <laughs> well, it's funny. The first the, for one of the first bar shows I ever got put on was he was on it as well, and he was like right after me. And I was joking, like I was doing my set, and he was like literally like ten feet, like like staring me down. I think he was trying to get in the zone, but he was like so awkwardly close to the stage and me that I think people were trying to figure out who they should have been watching. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not making this part up. Nope, nope. this was, uh, but you know. I, yeah, he's great. He comes that out. That stare to all is a part of the way everybody. That's meets right. Jeremy. That's right. Well, he told me a story. I'll let you talk to him. But there's a story that you need to hear about his new job, and that's all I'm going to say because I can't say anymore. All right. Did you hear? All Do right. you know the story? Okay, yeah. Mm, We're coming yeah. for the story, Jeremy. Yeah. You'll, yeah. So no, but it's great. I mean, all the people you meet, like Rob Stanton and some of these other people, like it's it, all the people that I met. You know, yeah. it's crazy. You know, yeah. All networking, man. And uh, J- Jeremy promoted the the crap out of it and actually got uh, a lot of comics and. Got some audience. His pa- his parents actually came out. No, that's really? Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah, last night, you know, he did a good job. He was uh, he hosted, and uh, we even had some others. I know uh, uh, an Ashley Pontius. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's like a, she came from like two, like an hour and a half away. She drove hour and a half, two hours. Last to, night? No, last night. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I've seen her because she's headlined at like the Church of Satire. Oh, yeah. Because that's a cool little, little church, club. Yeah. Like on a Monday, Hanover, Al Davis right? and I ran, like did a two, it's two hours to get out to there. Wow. We did a two hour because they did it for five minutes of stage time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al, and Al's your your uh, podcast partner. Yes, right? Al, Albert and, and then I. You got to drive back, and then you got to do two hours back. <laughs> yeah. But we've done. I got to do. I did uh, New Year's Eve weekend there, and so it's cool because that was a club I had seen that I knew was around. Knew was like. Did you a crash regional. there? or You drove back? No, I drove back. Oh wow. Yeah, and I, then the next day went right back and did the same thing again. New Year's Eve. Oh boy. I did that with Frank Vignola, so I took him down and. Yeah, that was uh, but yeah, Al and I did done a couple trips down because they have a they and they're they do it up like the production value that they do on the mic even on Monday like they're in it for the love of the game like you you yeah. know what I mean like there he's got this club Jim Bryan he's got Darnell and uh, Tom Nutty who are just diehards and they work so hard to to try to make the club this huge thing and it's so great they've been selling out recently it's a good smaller venue but they've been selling out like crazy the last couple so it's I've fun heard nothing to... but good things from comics yeah. oh my god Natalie Cuomo and they'll get like some decent Steven Rogers you know a lot of my um, Baltimore buddies that do comedy end up there because yeah that's you know? per- exactly yeah. right so I've I've gone out there a couple times and, and another long car ride that's where Albert and I came up with the idea for the Seriously Dad podcast oh no kidding 
was. He pitched it to me. Great podcast, was, by the way. Check it out. Were, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we just hit uh, Joey Callahan. I don't know if you know Joey Callahan. Yeah, I just watched that episode. It was so great. what a great, great human episode. being yeah. and funny he as anything. Priceless. He yeah. came on to promote his dry bar special, which was the notorious <laughs> yeah. father of daughters. Yes, the notorious and it just hit today. It just hit. It just surpassed our highest uh, episode. It like hit like 370 views today in just two and a half days. Beautiful. Um, so it's been yeah, it's been it's been very exciting. So and Alan and I are trying to just be like we're trying to not like we're not sitting there trying to do material we're bringing real topics like we're going to have an episode LGBTQ episode mm-hmm. where a, uh, a producer talks about his son coming out to him and uh, Lamar Todd's going to be on next week we're going to be talking about that school shooting where that six year old brought the gun Jeez. to school yeah, yeah. so like we're you know we tr- but you know tension naturally gets broken sure you know so it's a good pod man it but, really is but we're just guys, trying like to flip the to script it. on it we try to be a little different than the average one and uh, and so far, it's been successful. We had Mark Riccadon on. We've been hitting steady, steady views. So it's been really exciting. And, um, and Mark's a great storyteller. Oh, my God. My, he told the story on there about Saturday mornings with his brother, and he would get up early, and he actually was pissing on his TV in the living room, the old tube TV. He would just drop trow as soon as Sesame Street came on, and the dog came over the hill. He would always pee on the TV. And he has no, re- no, I no idea why. Growing up in Ohio, am I right, dude? <laughs> he's like, and then he, and then they actually had to like pull out the floor and the carpeting because, like, even though he would clean it up, like it was, I was just like that, that, and of course that clip got like, you know, went like semi viral. It there, should, like, yeah. Nasty. So weird, but he's so funny because like you're just talking about all the weird stuff we do as kids because we all, you know, we all do weird things. Oh know? yes. But uh, love he was it. willing to share. <laughs> but yeah, so we've 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 been having a lot of fun with that podcast. So wait, what did Baltimore have to do with the uh, the, the forming of the podcast? You said so we were driving out there regularly oh, to go just to Hanover, and, everything. and we oh, were I just got, talking got, about got, it. Right we were always talking about our kids, and he, and and Al's a different style of father. He's a custody dad, so he has his kids like on the weekends. And actually, he when he had his daughter. They, uh, he was on the outs with the woman. Like they were breaking up. It was like breakup sex, and then all of a sudden, he now has a daughter with a woman that he was no longer with. Oh boy! Yeah, the and then first she episode ended of the up. Pod lays all we'll, that out. we'll edit yeah. this in post. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he no, shared all that. He shared all that. He shared all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how. That's yeah. That's so part these guys of our, are super open, man. Yeah, that's, we're that's super. What, part of what makes the pod great. Yeah. So like, and he shared all of that. So we we that's what we do. We sh- we're sharing a lot of our own, and then it's cool because then in return the the other guests you know share or open up little pieces, and we've been getting a lot of people saying like oh wow this is really great it's different it's good for a dad point of view it's good to hear or even women saying like oh it's kind of nice to hear like uh, you know i would never hear my husband talk like this right, or right. say these things so and it's cool when you get guests too i think because you get a different angle of that guest. well yeah i mean you get people like joey callahan to lamar todd to like mel harris was on mark riccadonna we have um we have some others coming up cool uh, soon that I, I want to I, I was just I was just thinking of asking Chris too at some point like just trying to get yeah we want different perspectives yeah. we're going to have uh, Emily Epstein White who's a mother yeah. but I know her, her from on. being up in New York yeah. so we're going to have her on so we're going to try to That's switch great. it up a little bit and um and yeah we're just it's a lot of fun or he and I just do an episode you know to to just have it be the dads and just have it be us because people were enjoying that too so. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to kind of keep it rolling and have fun with it. And do you do it out of your house? No, Neil Woods uh, in uh, Philly has a studio he runs out of his row home there, and so it's called Drop Tent Media, and he does all the producing for us, and uh, and we just show up, and yeah. we, you It know. looks good, sounds good. Yeah, he yeah. does a nice intro. He did all the artwork for us, um, so it's been really great. Um and we're just going to kind of keep that rolling, and it's been a lot of fun on Sundays. We usually do – we block out – we do two episodes on a Sunday, so we'll go and record Sunday afternoon from, like, 3 to 5. Okay. Um, which is perfect. So it's, like, a perfect time. In your spare time. In my spare time. It's blocked out. My Google it's Calendar is on yeah. point. My wife's great because I'll put something in the calendar. I tag her, and then she immediately accepts or declines. And we have the calendar oh, all filled sweet. out, so I, I know it. if I can get away with it or not. You I know? love it. Like, I have my first thing I'm going to be missing soon. The end of the month, I'm going to be missing my daughter's, like, talent show at her school. She's been playing the piano. I take her to piano lessons on Wednesday oh, cool. before, I go to, uh, before I go to Tuned Up. Okay. So I'll, I'll get to hear her, but like, that'll be the first thing that I'll be missing, that sort of, like. But, you know, I, I hear when I'm talking to people like Mark or even Chris, like, you know, you're going to hear that you're going to miss stuff. 
Um, and so I'm, I'm interested to see how I handle that. Right. Right. Up, you know, yeah, way, yeah. Like, it's not easy, it. man. And what's I'm, worth I it. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that'll, no, that'll no kids that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why the, the teacher tour in the summer will be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see if I'll miss my, my youngest daughter's birthday and mm. you know, some of those things that I'm, I'm trying to, trying to process all of that and see what my, what my thing are. Like, what am I willing to do? Yeah, for this, you right, know? right, the yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, that's it. You know, Steve Harvey's a good guy to listen to about that. Oh, interesting. He talks about the sacrifice all the time, and uh, I've heard a lot of good stories from him just on you know what it takes. And he talks about being in his car, and when he got his first shot at the Apollo, and he barely had enough money to get to it. Never mind, be on it, and like all the things that he you know divorce that he had gone through. Uh, and Where so, are you hearing Steve Harvey's story? Is this in bits or is this? So this was like he, no, he well, he'll like some. Sometimes I've seen clips that get released that are him talking, like almost like when he's doing Family Feud, but it must be like the pre-show when he comes out and like okay. talks to the audience. And then uh, he was on. I don't know if it was when he had that show because he had a show for Steve a while, Harvey the Steve Harvey Show. show yeah, so yeah. I think mm-hmm. he revealed a lot of them through some of the episodes of that oh, show cool, okay, as well. Cool, cool. Uh, and then I've seen another clip somewhere where he was talking about that going to the Apollo and not having enough money to get there and the sacrifices that you have to make, you know, and it's like I'm lucky because my wife is a saint. Um, she's the one that like half the time finds these things like you're away. I'm like, my wife found that for me. She was the one who sent it to me. I didn't even so know cool. it existed until she sent it to me. That is super cool. Um, and so we try to she comes out with me at least once or twice a week. So we do a date night and. I got to do better about doing date nights that don't involve comedy. <laughs> ah, you, you double dipping. <laughs> I know. It's so bad. It's, and she sees right through it. <laughs> By the way, I'm doing 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly right. That's exactly I didn't even it. know I was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the tickets. Look at my, it's on the car. He sets it up ahead of time so the, the, yeah. the, the club owner comes over yep. and taps and Can yeah. you do, we need you, really need you she's to film. For, <laughs> she's due for a very nice vacation. I love it, man. So. No comedians anywhere near. <laughs> but, you know, like, la- and I will say last summer we took the month off to go to Spain. And oh, wow. I but you still anything. posted on Facebook. Anybody know any mics? I might be able to jump on. I, did. I mean, you still. All the time. I, mean, I did. I tried. Unless so you blocked hard. your wife on Facebook, she saw she it. She saw it. She saw it. That's so awesome. I tried so hard. That's so awesome. <laughs> she, no, well, she, and that's it. I think she sees the fire in me that wasn't. You know, like I was really before COVID. I was in a bad. I was in a bad way. I just. I'd given my life to education, and I just felt like it wasn't respecting me back. Mm-hmm. And I think she saw me getting worn down by that. And uh, I had a couple of job opportunities that didn't pan out the way I thought they were going to. And uh, I was in a yeah, I was in a bad place. And so this was something that I think she sees that side of me now. That's like, oh, this guy's got life again. Oh, OK, this guy's vibrant again. And so I think that we we're trying to, you know, keep on that tuning fork. I that just want to follow the tuning fork inside. That's, you know, as long as I'm doing that, I'm not escaping. I'm not trying to do X, Y or Z like. It's like when people do drugs when they're younger. They do it to escape. They right. do it to chase a high. Yeah. You know? Numb themselves. Or, yeah. or not right. Exactly right. Yep. And so, you know, as long as it, it's not an escape and it's not that numbness and it's, I mean, there's always going to be a self-serving part of it. There's deep down, there's sure. always going to be. Any performance, there's But if I can go away for the weekend and now the girls can come with and there's a hotel with a pool and we could do stuff during, because that morning part's lonely. Just the last week when I did the dates up in New York, I'm like, the mornings were so lonely. Like, you're just sitting there having a, a crappy breakfast in a hotel, like, yeah. and waiting you have to do for your 7 o'clock call time and it's like 10 in the morning. Like, And you're the dude that's out partying afterwards yeah, and wants to sleep it. until so 3 in the like, afternoon. So it's yeah. like, I don't, so, like, I want them there because then we can go out and do stuff during the day. Like, yeah. I want them to be, like, and they get older, hey, daddy's playing, you know, New York or Vegas or wherever, why don't you come with us? That might be appealing when they're in their 20s and stuff, not to come to the show, but to come to wherever we are. Yeah, or totally. If I ever got to do a cruise ship or, you know, I think there's cool opportunities that I want to make it, I want to make it so that it's the family is with me. Right. Know? Yeah, I'm not trying Enjoy to. Enjoy the journey. So yes. you're not sitting there by the by yourself. Yes. I, yeah, I don't want to be. I, I, I can't remember what it was like to not have Amanda in my life. I don't remember what it was like to even not have kids at this point. It's been almost a decade since I've, we had our first kid, and we've been together 16 years. So I don't, I don't quite remember that life. I do remember feeling lost. I remember feeling like, like just, you know, you don't even like – just things like you know you don't even prepare meals for yourself you just go out and get something or you mm-hmm. you know what i mean or like you, like i remember the vagueness of things when i didn't have it was just like work 
go home, work, go home, and and now the family part is is the reason for any of that. So right, right. I think now I'm blessed to have that and have these beautiful two young daughters that, you know, having my mom with us. Uh, she's so excited. She loves the podcast. Oh, my God. She's like our number one fan. That's awesome. And it's interesting because I talk a lot about her in the podcast and growing up with two moms. And she keeps listening. And she loves it. <laughs> she loves it. Yeah. She's like, she's like, yeah, my friend didn't even know I was gay. And I'm like, what do you mean? She didn't know. She's like, she, she, said she, kept it in the, she kept it close to the vest if it wasn't someone that – Needed to know her sexuality, they didn't know because she. Well, you had an extremely fascinating upbringing. I learned listening. Yeah, to the it was crazy. I mean, oh my god, my upbringing is. I think that's part of the reason that the comedy part is so interesting for me is because of I have so much. I have such a story to tell that I can't wait till I can even get into that. Oh, can't wait till part of my sets are be about epic. that when I start mining all of that. Um, because I as I reflect as being a dad, as I reflect. You know, just being a guy married to a woman, that's not something normal in my family. The, sit so, the sitcom's like, already written. Yeah, the sitcom's it really there. It's, it's there waiting. I was like some Mr. Cotter reboot. I'm a parent <laughs> of an autistic daughter. Like, there's so many things there that are just like, people say to me, like, how did you, how did you come out so normal? And I'm like, well, first off, I'm not normal. But I knew how to blend it. Yeah. You know, I went to six different. Laugh. Yeah, I went to six different schools, K to twelve. I was in a different school almost every two years because wow, we were moving around a lot. Whether it was you know rent and we were you know, leases were up and we were moving out of areas or whatever the case was. Uh, yeah, I went to a bunch of different schools, K to twelve. So I think I was just used to. And there was a bit there where my dad was back in my life and tried to do custody, and so I did this. Go, oh, let me go live with him for a little while. This might be fun. It wasn't, uh, and but like you know, but there's those moments that you have that I'm like, wow, that, those are all stories. Those are all, and and it helped me like blend in with my environment. It helped me kind of be social, um, and uh, it's cool because now I get to use all of that to my advantage. Nice, that's you cool, know? man. It's super cool. Yeah, it is. Well, for Alan Hill, Jay Yoder, Soul Joel. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.